Rotten Tomatoes is the latest battleground in the culture war, say Vice, and they're not wrong, actually, and it's very interesting to see how Rotten Tomatoes is this field of battle. Uh, but like with all fields of battle for like, well, I'll just say the elite versus the commoners, uh, the elite have got control of the battlefield, so the commoners aren't going to win, but we'll get to that in a minute. But it uh, it reveals something interesting about society, I think, that uh, needs to be spoken about. But uh, anyway, as they say in this, oh, right-wingers are angry that critics do not have the same taste as right-wing review bombers. It's like, yeah, I suppose they might be. But like, the point is, why are the left-wing critics so out of touch? For example, on Dave Chappelle here, but also talking about the Fauci movie, which is a much more stark example. Uh, Dave Chappelle, of course, was critical of trans rights he's a turf it's critical of self-id really yeah well i mean like, but, you'd also that, but that before. is what they'd say is trans rights the self-id is whatever you want yeah yeah so but he's a turf but meaning... you remember uh, sorry Go, to butt in but yeah, the yeah. the previous special before this one as well he yeah. did that joke as when well what if i self-identify as chinese and it's, yeah and it's like okay so you know where he stands on yeah, this. He's yeah. done this before. Yeah. He's he's a, he's a biological essentialist. He thinks that there is some connection between your biology and your self-expression uh, because he's sane. Uh, but anyway, they say this week the cultural miasma spilled out just uh, beyond just the nerd sphere as Fox News and The Federalist both noted that there are big differences between the professional and amateur reviews of the two recent productions. Uh, speaking about the Fauci one and Dave Chappelle's one. Fox notes that the critics aggregated on Rotten Tomatoes do not like Dave Chappelle's new special, The Closer, more than a thousand ratings collected on the site of a 96% audience score, and The Federalist's uh, target was National Geographic documentary about Anthony Fauci. The publication, uh, they smear it, which I don't care about, uh, say that uh, the tomato meter expressing the views of ordained critics offers a 94% positive rating compared to just 2% of the general audience who gave similar praise. Uh, and they say they complain then, going, well, the idea that critics live in a bubble, bubble that puts them out of touch with the real salt of the earth people is not only an obvious but not very interesting truism. Okay, but that's not because, as they say, most people don't watch movies for a living. No, that's not the problem. Why are the critics all, and it almost universally, especially in the Fauci example, uh, and we'll get to that in a second, actually, uh, but why, why are the critics so detached? Why are they unable to serve an audience? What's their purpose if they're not actually helping people who are what, who would also be interested in watching these things. If the critics are like, yeah, so this sucked, don't watch it. And everyone's like, but this was awesome. Why would you tell us not to watch it? What's your point? Why do you exist? Why do you get paid to do anything? And the point is, of course, they get paid to promote the, the cultural narratives that the elites want them to promote. And so they are the sort of uh, heralds of this culture and that's why this is an important battleground uh, so anyway uh, what Fox and the Federalists and others like the Spectator neglect to note is the audience scores are in part artifacts of campaigns aimed at producing exactly the kind of coverage Fox and the Federalists are providing as in they're, they're just about right wing disinformation campaigns like the irony of this is that that's exactly what the left wing critics are doing it's exactly yeah. what the left wing critics are doing. They just have the inside perspective because they are on the inside of the institutions. I'm sorry, describing public opinion as a right wing campaign. Well, no, no, no. What they're saying is these aren't these aren't like public opinion. What this is is right wing campaigns to review bomb and yeah. left wing campaigns to review increase or whatever you know to puff up but again they're describing the public one the one where there's thousands of people engaging but they're only, yeah but the, what they're saying is those people engaging are actually right wing partisans right uh, well we could also just poll people and we look can. at the box office we or, can and we we can obviously look at the failing hollywood movies and say well look there must be some truth to it but the point is they're saying well look you're just you're just being a right wing partisan okay but all the critics are being left wing partisans that's what they are you know and the reason that people want why would you why would you have an, any expectation that on like the last jedi there would be partisan review bombing why would anyone care well they care because it represents a genuine separation of narratives where one side an entire political wing is not being served by the people on the inside i i, I no. the the point there with the idea of saying that all of the public are just right wing mm. As well, I think is not to be. But no, no, that's because, not what they're saying. Though. Well, they kind of are when they when they argue that the review bombs no. for let's say the Last Jedi or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Those are all just right wingers who disagree with us. It's like I, I love how it's such a leftist tendency. Like they're so oh, yeah. far to the left, the critics themselves that they view even just anyone who is not even involved in politics just dislike the movie. Yeah. 
right winger. But the the allegation isn't that the, the public are right winger. They obviously believe they represent some sort of silent majority, who for some reason will never come out in their favour. Uh, but what they what they're saying is, well, this is just a right wing campaign. It's like yeah, but the critics themselves are part of a left wing campaign. So don't sit there and going, oh, I mean, they begin this, we're going, oh, the tedious culture wars. You're part yeah, of it. What you, what, your vice.com. That's, that's what you do. That's what the critics are doing. They're literally part of the culture war, and they know it. And so they're not representing the public at large. So what they're representing is the left-wing narrative hegemony, and they're complaining that the review bombing, well, that's the, the right-wing representing their counter-narratives. Like, yeah. That's what you're both doing. Don't complain about it. But uh, anyway, they they carry on and say, right wing used as a boosting Chappelle's special precisely because the aged comedians, tasteless jokes about trans people play into a broader grievance campaign about cancel culture. No, it's because it'll piss you off. <laughs> well, yeah, but why do they want to piss them off? Because you have a broader grievance campaign against people like Dave Chappelle because they say things that you consider to be not left wing, not orthodox. And you want those people cancelled. You know, it's like... The, the framing of this is just like, oh, well, you know, you're the ones doing it. No, you're both doing it. And it's okay that you're both doing it. There's not wrong. You know, the, like the politics is part of life. Yeah, exactly. And you've got to accept that you are um, literally the elite who are trying to guard and gatekeep against all of this. And so we can go to the next uh, link. You can see this has been a battleground for many years. Again, like in 2019, yeah. uh, Rotten Tomatoes even said they were going to change the way that this worked in order to prevent this kind of right-wing review bombing by weighting the reviews. Uh, and so they in this because Captain Marvel came out, Captain Marvel, like highly politicized movie, because Brie Larson decided she was like, I don't hate white dudes. I just don't want the review of my movie. It's like, oh, hmm. that's going to win you friends. Going to make an account? Yep. Uh. <laughs> Log into Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, and so uh, this uh, was only popular with like 28% of people who reviewed it on Rotten Tomatoes, even though, of course, the politically orthodox uh, reviewers were all in unison about how wonderful Captain Marvel was. Uh, and so they were complaining and being like, well, you know, blame trolls who have previously waged campaigns to lower audience ratings for movies like The Last Jedi and Ghostbusters. Why are you at war with large sections of your own audience? Because you have a politically partisan narrative. Uh, and so in a major change, Rotten Tomatoes will no longer allow users to post audience reviews before films hit theatres, for example, in this case. Uh, and they've also started waiting them and things like that. And so I thought it might be worth just going over to the reviews for Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> looking good why why did they even make this piece of s <laughs> just like, who thought this would be a good idea that's a great question and i have no idea what the answer that is but one well, hour and 45 minutes there's a north korean answer well, that, well that's that's oh, propaganda is, is never a waste of money exactly right it's it's always always the the setting and confirmation and conclusion of narratives right and because they view all power social power to be bound up in narratives uh, this is very much what the critical race theorists think very much what has been brought across into the left at the moment and what the right is failing to understand really uh, but right so we can just look at some of the uh, the critics if you if you go down to the all critics and then just scroll down i just took some of the um some of the uh, a real treat yeah l i mean look at this right <laughs> so one of them is if the goal was to humanize the 80 year old talking head filmmakers john hoffman and janet tobias have succeeded found she makes no pretense about where its sentiments lie lauding lauding a figure whose critics have seemingly twisted his image beyond recognition in their attempts to demonize him very very interesting and fauci comes out as an honest and fascinating character I'm sure the dear leader this. comes out as an honest and fascinating character in bloody triumph of the will. I mean, you're literally you know? watching a piece of propaganda. And you like, know you are. No, but even if we take all of the politics about mm -hmm. Mr. Fauci and yep. the pandemic, if you didn't know any of this, if you, yep. you come from a, I don't know, a, a tribe in the middle of Papua New Guinea, you'd be able to tell, okay, this is a movie about a guy that's just going to like suck his D yeah. for the next you know, 90 minutes. No, more than that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Nearly, what was it, 115 minutes or something. But uh, anyway... Fauci is a refreshing figure and standard bearer for the truth. All of these critics falling in line, telling people something they know isn't true. Yeah. They know the audience doesn't believe. Right? A su the subject comes away smelling of roses and it seems deserved this time. Really, the propaganda film made the subject look like he smells of roses. And it was deserved, according to the propaganda film. Well, I mean, okay then. Right? But what I love about this, this is a negative review, right? An admiring film that still like ends up doing him a disservice. Fauci is smarter than Fauci. 
As in, this <laughs> propaganda film, in which he does nothing wrong, doesn't suck his D enough. That's a that's a Saddam Hussein line. Exactly. In, in For people who don't know, in Saddam Hussein's uh, courtroom, when he was being charged and ended up being given the death penalty, he argued, I cannot even argue for Saddam Hussein's innocence, because even Saddam Hussein is too great to argue for Saddam Hussein's innocence. <laughs> that's literally <laughs> what Danny Lay, the Financial Times, uh, says. He's literally, the, the dear leader is greater than a film that makes him out to be the greatest man to have ever lived. <laughs> that uh, is just literally saying, well, the, the, the Quran does Muhammad a disservice because Muhammad's better than the Quran's portrayal of him. So, good God. I can't believe Almond White is finally on the right side of history for once. Like, I don't know if you've seen Donkey's video about Almond White. <sighs> no, I haven't. Like, he's like the, the anti-reviewer. Like, oh, is he? Everything that's good is bad, and everything that's bad is good, <laughs> usually for him. Like, he became a, a literal meme overnight because of that. Right, okay. okay sorry, sorry. But, uh, no, no, no. And again, shines a light on the accomplishments and the man himself. His knowledge, his experience, his honesty, and his integrity. Is that how you describe Fauci? Honest? <laughs> With integrity? Uh, that's how I describe Research and gain of function? <laughs> just, just saying. Uh, uh, but the final one I liked here, absorbing and ultimately uplifting. So I just, I walked away feeling good. Yeah. I was absorbed. I was uplifted. Fauci is our Lord and Saviour. After I watched the Fauci documentary, uh, what did the audience think? Bored. If no, nothing else. No, no, it's interesting, actually. A lot of the audience uh, reviews were surprisingly uh, crisp and incisive. Yeah. Uh, so one of them is Fauci really missed the mark. Rather than showing the good and the bad about Fauci, it instead paints him as a perfect yet underappreciated hero. No part of this film feels honest. It feels like an artificial and insincere attempt to bolster his reputation. Didn't sound like right-wing propaganda to me. I, I don't know what gave that away, though. No, of course. But it just sounds remarkably like someone who watched it who wanted to hear the good and bad. Uh, the next one, Fauci, uh, very disappointed. Like many, I was deeply grateful for Dr. Fauci in the early days of the pandemic and grew more cynical as things became politicised. I was hoping that Fauci would paint a picture of a man who is not perfect but dedicated. Instead, this movie was the biography of a saint. Right-wing propaganda. This no. is just a part of a culture war. No. Just there's... a fair-minded individual. Exactly. This was essentially a piece of propaganda that is contributing to the polarisation of society. I would have loved to have heard a balanced perspective on both sides of the challenging issues that Fauci has faced in his career. Scientifically interested and politically moderate types will be very disappointed in this. Clearly that's Tucker Carlson's alt account. You know, it's right wing hacker. No, it's like not a, you know, the, the Rotten Tomatoes thing from Vice is not really true. It seems from this, but even then when it is true, it's justified. But this is just the best example I can think of, of how you've got this genuflecting class of like subservient, like, you know, angels worshiping at the altar of the main narrative. And it doesn't reflect reality. Like the next one. I already know that this documentary is not received by many, but well by many, but I watched with an open mind to learn as much as I could about Fauci. If this documentary had a different purpose, a different title, I would probably be more forgiving. What do I mean? Well, this was supposed to be a documentary about a public figure. Not a biography, but a documentary about man's career. No, covering the many years of service this man had with no mention of any controversy is troubling. Uh, it did not mention the wins and the losses. It just painted him as a dedicated yet underappreciated man. Did I watch the next one? Did I watch the same documentary as these critics? We have been watching this man for almost a couple of years now in real time. This documentary does not ask the hard questions or challenge his lies. Was this documentary just made stroke his ego further? Where is the balance? The next one, uh, I, went, I went through a bunch of pages to get the best ones. Uh, basically a propaganda movie. If you're looking for an honest and truthful account of this man's life, this isn't it. And pedantic, saccharine and pandering. This is not a move me movie. This is an advertisement. That's the public's view. Yeah. From people who seem to have actually watched the film, no, no, not just review bombing trolls. They're right wingers. Yeah, all right wingers. Because they gave it half a star or a star or one and a half stars, some of them. Yep. Right wing. Yep. That's what makes you right wing now. But it, but the, the Vice are right. The Rotten Tomatoes does have a sort. It is a, a vector in the culture war, a battlefield in the culture war, and there is something revealed with this. There is there is a deeply disgusting, obsequious media class. I just picked up on something there. No, they're they're arguing that. Reviews of propaganda films for partisan purposes are partisan. I was like, well, hang on, of, of course they're going to be bloody be partisan. Like, if you make a, a partisan film mm -hmm. or game or anything mm -hmm. else that gets reviewed on these things, and then you're surprised that people who also have their views reflect their views in their reviews, big shook. 
Yeah, but the the point that it reveals, but though, if we can go back to with, the... Even with chaps who are not partisan at all, as most of those reviews are, they're just saying, no, this is just a propaganda film. I don't want to watch that. Yeah, but the point is, if 90% of the critics, and this is not like, you know, people on their blogs, this was Financial Times, you know, New York Times, these are, these are important institutions. If they all give this one, it is clearly just a one-sided propaganda uh, exercise. If the critics, although giving it all 90% positive, glowing, this is amazing, uplifting, Fauci did nothing wrong, he's my saviour, it goes to show you everything about the current class of yeah. people ruling over us. Right? They're, they're totally disconnected. It shows disconnected. that they're in agreement with the propaganda film. Yes. And they, but it's, yeah, exactly. And this is how you maintain access to being part of the elite. You have to agree with this uh, narrative. Whereas it's not serving the people who they're ruling over. And so this does show a deep divide between the elite and the regular people. And I think that's uh, I think that's important. Also looking forward to more of it. Mm. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full thing at 1 p.m. every weekday at lotuseaters.com. Or you can sign up to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. Yeah, we've got loads of really good stuff. Uh, every week we have a Contemplations and Epochs episode that goes up. And in the Contemplations, we talk about just interesting things and uh, the epochs episodes are probably my favorite because i love talking about history uh, this latest one is we're doing a, a bit of a series on the hundred years war and uh, why england kept winning and we've not finished it yet and you're going to really enjoy the end of that one but uh, we've also got uh, other excellent episodes that we do like the book club uh, the most recent one was shooting an elephant by george orwell this was about his time in burma as a colonial officer and when he was tasked with the shooting of a rampaging elephant. And it's really, really interesting uh, what the circumstance of the thing was. But we also have lots of other content, such as premium articles, which have audio tracks on them for our silver and gold subscribers. And we do premium podcasts about things that we don't really feel that we can put on YouTube or have done a particularly large amount of research into. And so it's, uh, it's worth keeping them uh, slightly more private. And we also do lots of very interesting interviews, such as this one with comedian Steve Hughes, which was really fascinating because I didn't expect him to be a philosopher. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. Also, the last thing to mention is the live event content we have. So we occasionally, when we get around to it, doing our live events and the videos from them are on the website as premium, of course, because people came to see and paid. Mm. So go and check that out. This is on the worst of critical race theory. Yes. And I do mean the worst. It's unconscionable. Yeah. So if you'd like access to all that premium content, go to lotusseaters.com and subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.